Hi, I'm Kirsten Kelly. If you're enjoying these videos, please check out becoming a patron of mine. There's more information in the description of this video. I'm also working behind the scenes to bring you some great deals on some fabulous products. So if you see a card pop up during this video, click on it to check out these great deals. Today's video is on how to slow the horse down without pulling on the reins. Now, the core, which we've talked about in several of my other videos, is super important for encouraging the horse to lift his shoulders and slow down. If you use the reins all the time with nothing else, what the horse is more likely to do is actually just lean and pull back on you. By using your center and your upper body, you're encouraging your, this is your engine here. So you create all your engine and then it powers through the horse to the bit. If you wait till all of that power is in your hand, you're going to have, you know, you're trying to stem a waterfall. If you actually engage all of this energy in the middle of the horse, then you can use it and send it where you want it to, to go, which is so much better for, for you as a rider and more enjoyable for the horse. So there's a couple of different things. There's the use of your core, so bracing the obliques, bearing down through your centre a little bit is your typical half halt aid, but you've also got some other things. If you think of lifting your belly button up and lifting your sternum up, what that also does is encourages you to use your whole body. Now, if you end up being behind the vertical, so if you just want to lean back for me as a demo, you'll see a lot of dressage riders start to be behind this. When you are behind here, you're affecting the horse's natural state of balance, so that's going to be ineffective. It also changes your hip angle, so it makes it harder for you to sit to the trot. So what we want to think about is that when you use your upper body, you think of um, using your back muscles, so you brace against a little bit when you want to stop the horse. And all of these are subtle. You don't want to see somebody jamming their weight back to get the horse to slow down. It's just thinking, engage your core and then hold a little through your back. Hold a little through your hip just for one stride to encourage the horse to set back. The other thing is that the thighs are super important. Okay, so if you come trotting down the center line and you want to keep the horse straight, you're channeling that energy between your legs. By closing your knee and your thigh, you're basically squeezing the horse's wither up in front of you. So, Belle, what I'd like you to do is go out for me and we're going to pick up trot and we're going to practice trot walk and I don't want you to use any reins. Now you'll find that most horses actually become very sensitive to, sensitive to the other aids. That's it. So keep your hands carried in front of you. Beautiful, that's it. And then you have a nice look of the horse going forward through the body. That's it. So she went a little wiggly that time, didn't she? Let's pick up the trot and try it again. And if you can try to have the transition in this section, it just makes it easier for our viewers to sort of see it. That's it. So we'll spend the time now getting that feeling of the hand staying in front of you so that the horse learns to listen to the other aids. There we go. Yep, so prepare now. Brace through your core. Excellent. Yep. She'll try and do a little wiggle. Pick up the trot again. Make sure she stays a little, a little um, straighter. That's it. Good. And now I'm going to get you only to use your knee and thigh. So you could really see that the horse's engine was still creating and that the shoulders really came uphill. Let's show another one. And you know, the core is important, but the thighs are also super effective. Back up to the trot. Make sure the hand is staying in front of you. That's it. Good, and I want you to use the thigh and the knee again. So you feel like you lift the front end up in front of you. Super. 
Well done. Now, you could see it dribbled on a little bit too much, didn't it? So you see it came up beautifully, so you could see how effective it was. So this next time you're gonna pick up trot, you're going to use a little bit of thigh to encourage the front end up, and then I want you to finish the transition by bracing through your core. Okay. Float your hands so we can see that you're not using your hands. Good thigh, good girl. Yes, it was, you know, I was going to say, it was a little over there. It was like one of those sneaky transitions you ride going away from the judge so she can't see what's going on. Yeah, let's pick up Trot and we'll do one more. Good girl. Float your hands so it's staying in front of you. That's it. Relaxing your elbows. Very nice. Keep going a little bit further. That's it, good. Now a little brace of your thigh and then finish it with your core. Good girl, good girl. And then give her a big pat, excellent. Belle's horse is lovely and responsive to the core and to the use of her thighs. Please don't get despondent if you have a little bit of an average Joe Bloggs horse and he's a little bit deaf to these sensitive aids. He will get better, but you must repeat it every single time you do a transition. Not only does it make you physically stronger and better balanced, but it also means that the horse will be nicer to ride and he'll be so much better balanced. <laughs>